Last night, the Chief Executive Officer of Nikasana, Darren Eels, has came out in a Q&A session where Nikasa fans could call at the BBC Newcastle and ask whatever question they want. And in return, Darren Eels would give quite an insightful and also authentic answer. Now, first off, I can't recommend the interview enough. Make sure to go about BBC Newcastle and watch it for yourselves. Now, I'm going to give my opinion straight away of Darren Eels. I thought it came across really well. I think he's quite honest. He didn't BS the fans. I think with a previous ownership, I think fans can be quite misled at times or be kept in the dark where we weren't giving a clear and obvious answer on something. Whereas now, everything's transparent. Fans know exactly what they're getting with a football club now. And there's a clear understanding between staff members at the club and the fan base. So, yes, straight off, I thought Down Eels did an amazing job and he answers quite a lot of questions about the club itself. But... As you can see in this title, we are focusing just on his comments on St James's Park. The future of St James's Park has been made a lot clearer now. Darren Eels has made some really insightful comments about it. And we're here today to get through it all and to discuss. St James's Park should it be renamed and how could we expand the stadium? All coming up. Well, first off, I think the best way to start this video off is by asking you guys watching. Would you rename St James's Park? We're getting to more detail about why the club wants to rename it and how fans can get involved with that. But for now, though, just a simple question. If you had the choice, would you keep St James's Park or would you rename St James's Park to a Saudi Arabia sponsor in order for the club to generate more money, meaning we can buy more players and spend more on the transfer market? What would you do? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. If you're new around here and you enjoy what you're watching, make sure to get down there, hit that subscribe button. It keeps you all updated on whatever I next upload. If you also have any recommendations and any videos you'd like to see about St. James's Park, make sure to put it down in the comments section. I'm always looking to make some more about it as well. There's quite a lot to debate about and uh, yeah, a lot to talk about as well. And finally, if you enjoy it, make sure to get down there, smash the like button. And without further ado, let's get into it. Renaming St James's Park, what are the good and what are the bad things that we would get as a football club for changing the name of our stadium to a Saudi Arabian themed sponsor? I think it's best to get this out of the way first so we all can have a good judgement and kind of look forward and see what's the best for the club. So let's get through all the positive stuff first. So first off, I said it before, we will make a lot of money. The fact that this has even been suggested by the club and talked about by the Chief Executive Officer suggests to me that the Castle will make a fortune from changing St James's Park. It's something that the club has obviously looked at. The fact that Down Hills has came out live on there and said that we're going to talk to fans about this and we are going to consult with everyone to see if it's the right call to make. The fact that he's done that suggests to me that the Castle will make millions upon millions. And I don't want to speculate too much, but going forward in the future, the millions we spend on players, that could be the difference between, well, Finishing high in a European spot and us missing out, so it could really play a massive part in the future of Newcastle. But that's a speculation, we don't know that. What we do know is that in 2012, Newcastle United St James's Park was renamed to the Sports Direct Arena. Now, that had a negative reaction all around from the fan base. I do think it's good that Down Hughes has actually addressed that live in there as well. He spoke about the past, he's well aware of Newcastle's history, he didn't overlook it, he actually came out and addressed that. And he said that we will not do what was done in the past, essentially. So, uh, the thing with this takeover now is that we know that the money generated will be put back into the club. Whereas in the past, it was just done to, to fill somebody else's pocket. So, yeah, I think that's something to take into consideration. We will make a lot of money and that could dictate where we finish in the league. You know, a positive as well is that it could generate more sponsors. It could attract more sponsors to the club. It makes Newcastle a more attractable club. And when sponsors elsewhere say that, well, Newcastle has renamed the stadium for a sponsor to generate revenue, more sponsors will probably be keen on getting with Newcastle. So, of course, we've got Funny 88. That is going at the end of the season. That's a guarantee. And it could help Newcastle, in a grand scheme of things, get more sponsors in. Now, again, this is just me kind of, I would say speculating, because, well, I don't know sponsors well. I don't know how this would work behind the scenes, but I could imagine that. If we were to rename St James's Park, it would get more sponsors looking at Newcastle going, we want to work with this football club. So that's something you want to take into consideration as well. And just in a global sense, Saudi Arabia, when the people of Saudi Arabia see that 
St. James's Park's been renamed to a Saudi Arabian sponsor. It gets more people on board over there. It gets the representatives of Saudi Arabia on board with Newcastle and it just benefits a lot more because you've got to remember us where Newcastle is looking to be a global brand. And uh, it's these sort of things that is going to work well. However, though, what about the negatives now? So an obvious negative would be the backlash. Uh, I know straight away that with journalists, with fans of opposition clubs, they'll look at this and they'll just go straight away. Sport washing, it's disgusting. The integrity in Newcastle's gone. And straight away, they'll be in the club's back. It's going to be a negative media response to the club. And as for fans, you've seen it firsthand. I do get sick of it and I'm sick of seeing opposition fans is just this bias towards Newcastle, this media bias. You know, it comes from the same individuals. It's people out there that didn't like Newcastle in the first place. You, you can just see the agendas. So, yeah, that's something that's going to definitely happen. Uh, as well as that, well, the history of St. James's Park, the name's getting changed straight up. So, that's going to upset quite a lot of fans. Uh, to some fans, I think for an older demographic, I could imagine a lot of older fans would be more inclined to keep St. James's Park because, well, they've been with St. James's Park the full life. So, I, I think seeing a name change, especially for sponsor as well, I, I think it can have quite a negative effect on fans as a whole and it's going to upset a lot of people. There's no doubt about it. We'll get into that just shortly, but a negative side of that would be that fans will get upset as a result. And the history of St. James's Park is going to be drastically changed for the future of the club. As for Darren Ewes himself, he came out on BBC Newcastle and he stated that he will not be renaming St James's Park at all if the majority of fans says they don't want to happen. It says it's crazy for the brand if 99.9% .9 of people say they don't want St James's Park to change. It's if there's a majority of people, Newcastle fans are quite and say, well, we won't have the name change. We understand that the money generated is going to be used to help the club and we are on board with that. That's when the club will make the call. So Darren will also sit down with loads of different fan groups, I imagine. The Trust, for example, United with Pride, we've got the Foundation, maybe, we've got also we've got the War Flag. So, he'll sit down with all these people in a, in a boardroom and he'll talk everything through. He'll explain his side of things and why the club wants to change the name. And then the fans will probably go away and come to an agreement over time. So, for example, with the Trust, they'll probably put a poll out saying, would fans be willing to accept change at St James's Park? And they'll go off the majority vote and that's what the club will decide on. It's that simple. It's a democracy now at Newcastle. The club will not make any major decisions without the support and backing of the fans. There's clear transparency between the ownership, the staff members and the fans. And that's going to be key for getting Newcastle to that pinnacle point now. So it's up to us guys. Do we want to see St James Park be renamed now? As for me, I'm not going to give my answer. I do have a clear answer. But I think it's best for me not to say it because, well, I expect this vote to be very split. I think it's going to be quite narrow, the margin. I think it's really going to be a 50-50 battle. I think no matter what I say, it's going to upset a lot of people. For that reason alone, I'm not going to say my opinion in this video. But yeah, uh, as for fan votes, it's up to us whether St. James Park gets renamed or not. And as for the second major point Darren Ewes has stated last night on BBC Newcastle, and it's about the expansion of St. James's Park. So he has stated live on air that the club has no intentions on expanding now, Amanda Stevie actually came out earlier in the year on the Athletic and she has said to herself that the club will be looking at every bit of aspect to try and expand the stadium. They have no intentions of moving. They want to stay in the centre of Newcastle. In fact, Darren himself even came out and he was saying how he loves to start about 100 odd pubs being around St James' Park, the most in the Premier League. And he was also saying how unique St James' Park is to the Premier League and the fact it's in the city centre. It's just what Newcastle is well known for, for being that stadium that's in the centre of the city. So the club is sticking by its guns. It does not want to move at all. So the expansion, how in the hell do we do it? Uh, now, it's going to be very hard to do. Uh, we'll talk about each individual stand briefly. So obviously with the East stand, we have grade two listed buildings behind it. So it's quite literally impossible to even consider expanding there. Uh, as for the away section now, so the back of that stand is next to Leeses Park and it was a public act where we can't build on Leeses Park, so that's again ruled out. The Melbourne stand, the problem to that stand being is that behind the stand, 
is the major roads of Newcastle. You've got no chance of even touching those roads. It's not happening at all. So the only stand you can realistically consider expanding on is the Gallagher end, but there's still a lot of major problems there. So Mike Ashley has sought the land behind the Gallagher end. You see it when you go to the match day, there's currently a lot of renovations being built on it. That land's gone. We've sought the land, we can't get it back. Uh, as well as that, the metro line runs on the St James's Park, so we've got to quite literally remove the metro line so we can build on top of it. Uh, we've got all sorts of other issues as well. So the road that goes along the back of the Gallagher end, it's a quite a major road for ambulances going to the RVI. So in order to expand the Gallagher end, you've got to have a road essentially for them to get to the RVI because, I mean, it takes them longer to go on a different road and that could be life and death for patients. So you've got to look at all these different things. You think it's basic with football, but you've got to look at so many different factors in the community and just... In a building sense, is it possible? Uh, I've seen a lot of fans suggest building down or rotating the ground. Uh, as for building down, as far as I'm aware, you still got to expand anyway because of how the stadium is. You just you can't physically build down. You still got to move it out in order to do that. And as for rotating the pitch, <sighs> I mean, how how on earth are we going to rotate the pitch? Where would the castle play in the meantime? We've got so many different problems. I just can't see how we can do it. Um, I had to do a lot of research. I had to do a lot of think my own time. I think it probably is possible uh, for the club. They'll be looking at every different aspect. They'll be talking to so many different people. I think there probably is a way you can do it. But personally for me, I just can't see it at the minute. I, I don't know how we could do it. There's just so many different things you've got to look at. So, yeah, I, I think at some point I'll do a proper in-depth video where I do a lot of research and I make sure I know what I'm talking about essentially because, well, there's so many different things you have to look at. I can't just sort of briefly talk it over in a video. But yeah, the club plans and expanding. They're still sticking by the guns. That is massive news for the club. Now, personally for me, I, I will talk about the stadium side of things. I, I do want us to stay in the city centre. I, I think it's quite important for the economy in Newcastle. I think it's important for fans. I just think it's better as a whole because where would we actually move St James's Park to? Is just There's nowhere in Newcastle you could realistically put it at. So it had to be miles off from Newcastle, which for me, I don't like. So yeah, uh, for me, I will... Happily keep uh, St James's Park where it is. It's just how do we expand it? That's the major talking point for us. But anyway, guys, that's it in the video today. Uh, let me know your thoughts down below. Some really interesting things to talk about. I thought Darwin came across brilliantly yesterday. I think the intentions of the club. I've seen journalists come out and talk about how amazing Darwin and Dan Ashworth have both been when they're talking about Newcastle, when they come across to the journalists. So the future is bright no matter what we do. Uh, the club has got clear intentions of where we want to be at. And... I think we will get there. Uh, we're not guaranteed anything. Money does not guarantee success. But I think the club will get to where it wants to be. And it's down to people like Downey or Dan Ashworth. People behind the scenes that work their asses off to make sure these things are doable. So we'll see what happens, guys. Let me know your thoughts down below. And I will see you all tomorrow.